what is a goat shelter greenhouse hotbed and why would anybody need one? I'll let you know after I clean up all of this. These branches are what remains of the cherry tree that hit our goat shelter. I've been meaning to get to this project for some time. With this warmer weather, I'm gonna to need to start mowing the lawn pretty soon. And obviously, all of this will be in my way. It'll be nice just to have it all taken care of. My plan for this time lapse is to separate out the larger pieces for firewood, the longer thin branches for chipping and shredding later, and then the awkward bits I'll put in this roll cart here for our fire pit.
Wendy got a little too excited about planting seeds inside under our grow lights. Now we have way too many plants to fit inside, but it's still a little bit too early to plant them out in our garden. Today is a nice warm day, but we can't really count on this kind of weather consistently for the plants, so we need a solution to this problem. We're gonna try something a little innovative. Hopefully it'll work. This is just an experiment. This dog kennel that we used as our first temporary goat shelter. We're gonna turn half of it into a compost bin. Between the warmth of the compost and the greenhouse-ish nature of this structure, her plants should do pretty well out here. Before I show you how it'll work, when we first bought our home, there were cedar board accent walls in almost every single room of the house. That just wasn't the look that we wanted, so I tore all that out, and the good boards I kept just because scrap lumber is always useful. Here inside the kennel, there are these bars right along the middle section, perfect for slipping in four foot lengths of those cedar boards. This space behind here will be filled with the compost and Wendy's plants will just sit right on top to take advantage of the warmth. We will lock the goats out so they don't disturb her plants. You can reach all the way across, so that's because I really only need to reach, you know, kind of halfway. Hey, Rogie. This is stinky. I don't like it. <laughs> See the steam come off when I pull it in and out though? Yeah, it's really working. I don't know if you could read that thermometer. The heat right now is about 140 degrees, which is great for what we need. The compost we used was wood chips with goat poop from in front of the goat shelter, along with old hay, straw, and wood flakes with goat poop from inside the stalls. Wendy just replaced the black plastic that was on the top with a clear plastic so her plants will be able to get as much light as possible. I think this is going to work really well. Well, that didn't work really well. The fresh hot compost is giving off way too much ammonia for such a small enclosed space. The ratio of green material in our compost is a little too high. We tested out the system Don't eat my tripod. Indigo. I mean it, don't eat my tripod. The ratio of green material in our compost is a little too high. We tested out the system on just a few plants and they suffered a little bit. I'll show you what they look like. This is what they look like after just a few days in here. There's a few things that we can try. We could take off a few of the plastic panels in the front. That would increase the air circulation and improve the ammonia problem. But it might also negate the greenhouse temperatures that we're trying to achieve. We could add more wood chips to the compost to counter the high nitrogen sources or we could simply wait for the ammonia problem to settle out and solve itself on its own. 
But doing either of those would not solve our immediate need to protect Wendy's seedlings. Wendy's found a kind of shelving unit miniature kit greenhouse thing online. So we're going to give that a try when it arrives. <laughs> what are we doing out here, Wendy? I have ordered a kind of like a collapsible, one of those collapsible greenhouses with shelves on the inside to what I'm going to do is put my flats of plants that I'm growing in it, uh, especially for not so much the seedling starting side of it, but for the kind of taking tomatoes and peppers, eggplants, squashes, and doing the up potting because I end up, I always do this to myself, I end up with more plants than I can realistically fit anywhere. And we are working on the I don't know what to call it. We've got this temporary goat shelter that we've used in the past and I filled it with compost from the goat area and right now it's too ammonia stinky. It needs to burn out some. It's got too much nitrogen in it and so it's way too hot and too much ammonia. So I put lime down on it and I've been watering it but it needs a few days to a week to kind of cool down some and get more stabilized because I don't really feel like stirring it and putting a bunch of other stuff in it. So that will hold probably four flats worth of things and I'm honestly thinking that I'll put smaller things in there like flower starts and things like that but not maybe edible things. Not, not because I'm worried about it or anything, but just because that will be an easy place to have four flats of plants. But this is going to hold a lot more for us. So that then I'll have the inside space and this space. And instead of having something like an outdoor greenhouse that's all built, which I don't want to have to deal with all year round for, for putting plant starts in, I just want something that I can put up and take down. So that's what this is. So we're going to put it up. Because it's time.
So, I have the greenhouse all put together, and I'm really happy because now my plants will get to go camping, even though I can't go camping because I'm not allowed right now. <laughs> so, who's not letting you go camping? <laughs> springtime and COVID. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I don't completely trust these flimsy shelves, but I think it will be okay. Yeah, well, it looks like it's made for those trays that you have. It is, it is. This is the kind of stuff that you put in here generally, is these trays. Um, yep, but we're definitely going to want to put bricks all along it to keep it down and also to make sure that, that the squirrels can't get in here and things like that, so... Because the squirrels just are really annoying here. Oh, I guess I could put my peas in. These trays are yeah, that tray has seen better days. Hopefully it'll help them warm up a little bit because they're kind of <laughs> almost germinating but not quite. So I need to get them going and you think we'll end up using this and the goat shelter greenhouse hotbeds because yeah, the goat shelter will really only hold maybe four or six of these so not not as many as I can I can put four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in here at least and then i could probably put another one down here even um and i could run a power cord out here and have heat mats and i could hang my premier one heat lamp in here and heat the place up a little bit if i wanted to so i think it will be good for getting started early and extending the season and things like that so yeah, yeah. 